Welcome back. Uh, we continue with uh, attention. We talk about attention varieties. Uh, as I mentioned, attention is a very hot topic. So uh, there are plenty. There is plenty of research around the topic, and some of the varieties of the the attention that I have mentioned would be this heart attention. Okay, here. Uh, the idea of the heart attention is that, for example, you have a picture and you focus only on a part of the picture and you forget about uh, the, the other part of the picture, okay? It's not just that you are putting attention in one part and putting weights in the other, no. You just uh, put a zero in the other part of the image, okay? Um, it's a zero, uh, one decision. In fact, this hard attention in the, in the paper that they presented works better than soft attention for image captioning. Okay, just to mention. Uh, then we have this other variation, which is the monotonic attention. Uh, for example, well, it's easy to see, no? The, the idea is that you, uh, you don't allow to put attention on on different orders in the graph, okay? You just follow a, a progressing line, okay? So here is the decoding, and you only put attention to words that are on the right, not on the left, okay? Uh, for example, where would this type of attention be useful? Which kind of application? A monotonic attention. For example, would it be useful in translation, a monotonic attention, or not? Yeah, the, you only you 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 only put uh, allow to put attention in your algorithm to to words the, that are in the future, let's say, not in the past. Okay, for example, uh, I mean, yeah, you just have to follow a uh, diagonal. Okay, for example, if you if you are here and you in the previous stage, you put attention here, you cannot put attention here. This would not be monotonic, okay? So for example, in translation, no, I just mentioned because there is reordering. So you cannot put, uh, if you do, can do not allow to, to put attention on, uh, this would not work. But for other applications, it can work. And that's what, what my next question. What would be a, an application for this? For a monotonic test? Image captioning. You know, no, because there is also, I mean, you don't follow an order no, of the image. I mean, yeah, but I, I don't know. I, I, image captioning is just describing the image, no? So if you say, I don't know, you, if you see a cat, In, in, in a map, I don't know, it just, well, I don't see it clearly, it depends, no, I, I don't see it. I, I, I mean, the, the question I was looking for, for example, is speed recognition. The idea is that it's monotonic, no, because you, are, you have the same language and you want to go from the speech wave to the, to the speech transcription, to the text, and you know it's, it's the same order, okay? It's, you are not changing the order, because it's the same language. So you are not changing. Uh, another type of attention would be self-attention. That means um, each element in the sentence attends to other elements from the same sentence. Okay, here you don't have two sequences. You, you, you only have one sentence and you, you are putting attention to this sentence. Uh, it's just, uh, this would be a complementary mm, to the LSTM work or the, to the gated recurrent units, okay? It's like knowing what you have to memorize from the same sentence, okay? It's knowing which words are important for uh, other words.
another thing is when you have multiple sources, okay? So uh, you have an image and you have a sentence and you have to translate from the source sentence together with the image. You have to put attention to the sentence. At the same time, you have to put attention to the image. So here you have to combine uh, at your attention into two uh, sources. Okay, this would be a variation of the attention, more difficult. Then you have this uh, recent uh, multi-headed attention, where multiple attention heads focus on different parts of the sentence. The idea is that here you. Um, we have shown before in the previous slide the scale dot product attention that it was uh, the query uh, dot product with the with the key. We scale this dot product and we multiply it by the value. But the idea of this multi head attention is that you uh, put in parallel uh, all these uh, several scale dot products, and this allows you. Um, to to multiply put attention um, to lend the attention in parallel. Okay, so it's it's no longer a, a sequence. You are doing it at the same time. Okay, this is more more easily uh, uh, to parallelize. Okay, that's that's uh, the, the the main objective of this multi-headed attention. Daniel, yes. Yeah? Good, good question. This multi-headed attention can be, depends on, 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 on your query and your key. It can be self-attention. Yeah. It can be if, if your query and your key are the, the, the same, come from the same sentence, it's self-attention. Yeah. Good question. If, if, if query and key are, are different, then it, it's not. So it can be both. Yeah. OK, about improvements in translation, which is a little bit like variations, but more. Um, for example, as, as I mentioned, uh, 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 in this part especially, I'm focusing on, on machine translation. And mm, for example, in, in, a, in the, f well, one improvement <laughs> of our attention is this, this coverage proposal that the idea is that, okay, I'm putting attention to some words, but um, the, no the general attention is not keeping track of the words that I'm translating. Here with this coverage attention, the idea is that you have to translate all source inputs, okay? This is similar to previous approaches in translation in the statistical, for example, that you kept track of the, of the input words that you were translating. So here in this coverage attention, it keeps track of the words that, that, that you are translating. So the, uh, the attention is kind of um, affected by this, no? Because once you know that you have translated some words, you don't, I mean, your attention changes, no? Okay. So it's keeping track of the, of the words that you have uh, translated. Uh, incorporating Markov properties in this sense is that the, the intuition that you want to solve with this approach is that attention from the last time tends to be correlated with uh, the attention of this time. So if add information about the last attention in, in uh, when making the decision for, for the current attention, okay? This makes sense in uh, speed recognition, in, 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 in translation, um, even also in image captioning, so you don't want to, uh, to change a lot your, from your previous attention, okay? Bidirectional training, just 
uh, this, this original idea also comes from the, the previous paradigm in machine translation where normally when you computed word-to-word -word alignments from the, you have in translation you have your input sentence and your target sentence and you compute the alignment word by word, okay? This is kind of what the attention is doing. When, because for each uh, target word, you know uh, which wo uh, source words are important, no? So this is, uh, with the attention, you do kind of word alignment. Uh, so in the previous approach, what we did was uh, having the word alignment from source to target and having the word, training the word alignment from target to source. So here it's doing the same with attention, no? You do your attention from source to target and your attention from target to source. So you have the alignments in both directions. And you can, uh, well, uh, you can learn from both directions. That's the idea. Supervised training, what happens when you have uh, a, pa a parallel corpus input sentence, target sentence, which has the already the word alignment, as, as the attention are the, the, this word-to-word -word alignment, is this word alignment information, you can take advantage of this and use it as a supervised training, okay? Uh, so that's, uh, these approaches talk about how to take advantage of this kind of gold standards that you have so that you, have, uh, you can introduce this information. Okay, applications about uh, attention. We have already talked about applications. We have mentioned machine translation, image captioning. Uh, but of the idea is that these are um, applications in general of this uh, encoder-decoder architecture, okay? This idea of that, that you have an input you transform it into an intermediate representation and from this intermediate representation you, you transform it into your final, your objective representation. This is the encoder decoder. And for example, you can, around this, with this approach, you can do many, many applications. One of these is uh, chatbots, okay? Your, here in, your, uh, in, in the case chatbots, you know, where, where, where you have a conversation with a machine, you have uh, your, your question or, or your, the user has an input sentence and the machine outputs a, a, a sentence, okay? So it's the same, the training would be the same as in translation, okay? It's just that, that your question is your input language, your source language, and your uh, answer is your target language, okay? So it's the same like a translation thing. So you can use this encoder-decoder with attention, okay, for this. Another application is the natural language inference, okay, where you, um, this, this application is that you have two sentences and you have to say if they are um, semantically equal, uh, if they have the same meaning or not. Uh, the, they are entailment, they are contradiction, or they are neutral, for example. For this, again, you can use this encoder-decoder because you're, you're in your training, what you would, um, well, it's a little modification of this encoder-decoder, but at the end, what you can have is a, this intermediate representation that tells you how similar are two sentences or not, okay? Then um, you can have text summarization, which is uh, the application where you, where you have a text and you, and you, and you just uh, create a summary with the major points of the original document. Again, your input would be the, the text and your output would be the summary. You have the question answering, which is similar to chatbots. Your input is a question, your output is a, uh, the answer. You have semantic parsing, where you map the natural language into a logical form. Again, this mapping. The syntactic parsing, which is the process of analyzing a string of symbols 
and uh, transform them in a formal grammar. And again, all, all these things um, have used the, 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 the approach that was originally proposed for machine translation. So in all these applications, this sequence to sequence with attention has succeeded. Sometimes with attention, sometimes without attention, but um, I mean, is this encoder decoder? Then you have uh, the image captioning that I mentioned. Here, the, the main difference is that your encoder is not a recurrent neural network. Mm, uh, normally, is uh, this uh, the, the, the convolutional neural networks that are uh, the famous AlexNet, no? that it's used for, for images. So you use it as, in, as encoder to compute this intermediate representation. And this intermediate representation is the input of the decoder. Okay. In this image captioning, you can use attention. Um, and the idea is that you are focusing on different parts of the image depending on the on the part that you on the part of the sentence that you are writing. Okay. Here is when in this paper, show at and tell is where it was proposed the, the heart attention that I mentioned before. Okay. Other applications in computer visions would be uh, the, the, the with attention or uh, with this encoder decoder architecture would be visual question answering, where you have an image and another language quest, uh, question about the image and the task is to provide an accurate language answer. The main challenge of this uh, type of uh, multimodal uh, applications is that sometimes it's easier to just, okay, you, I have the natural language question and I provide a, an answer. The big challenge here is to take advantage of the image information, okay? But this, uh, this is, would, here it would work the, the multi-source attention that I have mentioned, where you have image and you have text and you have put attention to both of them. Um, the video caption generation, which attempts to generate a complete natural sentence uh, in, in videos. Okay. And finally, we have the, the, the applications of speech. You can build a speech end-to-end uh, -end system, a speech recognizer with these encoder decoders. Okay. Uh, also, you can build directly speech translation. So, uh, a speech recognizer is you have the, the, the speech and you have to transcribe it into text. A speech translation would be you have the speech and you have to produce a, a text sentence into a different language. Okay, here what I'm showing on the right is uh, the attention weight for a speech recognition here on the left, which you see it's monotonic, okay? And the attention weight on the right, which is speech translation, where you see that there is some kind of order, okay, between the, the input speech and the target sentence. And okay, this is about applications. Just to mention that with, w the, I mean, this is a this is amazing. Eh? With one single architecture, you are doing all these applications. Before this um, was unthinkable. Okay, you you were dedicated to machine translation, and that was your field. And you changing to another one was difficult. Now, I mean, one application mixes with the other, e and it's the same architecture. You just have to. For example, in, in speech recognition in this case, of course, you are not applying the same encoder that you are applying to machine translation because, I mean, uh, speech is different than, than an input text in the sense that in speech you have much longer sequences for the, for the, same, for the same sentence, your input is much longer. So you have to take this into account and the, the encoder changes. But still, the architecture, the, 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 the picture is the encoder decoder, okay? The, 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 then the details are, are different to, to make things work. But uh, the idea is, uh, is the same. Okay, so I'm in stress. Uh, 
And well, uh, finally, I, I wanted to talk a little bit about this last um, proposal by Google, which is attention is all you need, okay? Uh, this was proposed in June, if I'm not wrong. Uh, and it's an alternative to uh, recurrent, ne to well, it's an encoder-decoder architecture as well, but not with recurrent neural networks, okay? Uh, the main motivation for this, uh, I mean, it's, there have been several approaches that have proposed alternatives to these recurrent neural networks. Uh, is that uh, recurrent neural networks are, n well, they, they training, a, just to, to, to make, uh, to give you an idea, to train our translation systems with, with, um, with the current tasks of machine translation with, when you have to train with uh, millions of sentences, I, it took us uh, like three weeks or something working in, sing in a single GMPU, okay? Because, uh, but, uh, so, so it was really a pain to train a system, okay? So this, al this alternative attention is all you need and some previous ones by Facebook with convolutional networks and things attempt to, to solve this, I mean, to speed up this architecture. And specifically here in attention is all you need, the main motivation of Google was to try to benefit from their computational power, they, their CPUs, uh, okay, that, so that they can parallelize their, their systems and, and train it much, much, much faster, okay? So that's the motivation to propose a, another architecture, okay? The idea is to avoid the sequentiality of the recurrent neural networks where you, where you have to wait uh, to have uh, one word, to, you have to wait to, uh, till you reach uh, the entire sentence, okay? Uh, so, they propose the, the transformer, okay, uh, and which is this attention uh, is all you need, and, and the idea is that it performs a constant number of steps, okay, and in each step it applies the self-attention mechanism, okay. Uh, in fact, here in the transformer, as the architecture of the transformer is this one, don't, I mean, you, you, I mean, this, this you cannot see it uh, properly, but the idea is that here what we have is a concatenation of multi-head attentions, what we just saw, okay? And some of them are self-attention, for example, this one in the encoder is self-attention, this one in the decoder is self-attention, and this other multi-head attention is mm, not uh, self-attention, <laughs> normal self-attention, because it has the encoder input and it has the decoder input, although you, you cannot see it. And the idea of, of, of the transformer is that you, uh, with this multi-head attention that, uh, that, that I explained before, is that you are putting attention to all the words at the same time, okay? You are, uh, um, putting different heads to work in parallel and, 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 and guessing from which word you, uh, you have to um, put attention in the same sentence. For example, in this case, I arrive at the bank after crossing the river. I, in, inside this sentence, the word that is relevant for bank is river to know that bank is not the bank uh, where I put the money, but it's the bank uh, from the river. This can be relevant, for example, in translation, where bank can have different translations in Spanish, for example, or, or in another one. So um, I want to know specifically um, where, to, where to put attention to and where to put attention in the same uh, sentence that I'm translating and um, from the sentence I, I am translating, okay? So it's putting attention to the two 
uh, sequences that I'm playing with, that I have, okay? Um, this is uh, the key, uh, the key of the transformer is the multi-head attention, okay? It's just a concatenation of these modules. And the, uh, the results are amazing. I mean, here you can see with, uh, on the left with recurrent neural networks, the blue with, the blue is the, the quality measure in machine translation, okay? The higher the blue, the better. Uh, in the middle, you have ap the approach that I mentioned by, by Facebook, that it's uh, an, an alternative architecture with convolutional neural networks. And on the right, you have the transformer, okay? So it's like two points blue, no, two points blue, more or less, uh, in, an English French, fr in an English to French task, okay? Um, and the idea, the big advantage of, of, of the transformer is this, no? That, that you are, um, for example, in this uh, anaphora resolution, no? uh, with the self-attention, with what you are learning, is this it, what it refers to, okay? So in the, in the first sentence, the it refers to um, the animal, okay? The animal was too tired. While in the second sentence, the it uh, refers to the street, okay? So this, uh, I mean, it was um, difficult to learn with, with, with recurrent neural networks because it, and, and I mean, and with the, the, the standard attention, uh, because you, you were not using self-attention, okay? In this case, because you are using self-attention and if we uh, plot the, the, the attention weights that you are learning, you can see that in the, in, the, in the sentence on the left where it refers to animal, mm, you are putting attention to animal much more than street. Whereas in the second sentence, we are putting more attention to street than to animal, okay? So this is the self-attention that allows you to uh, translate properly this pronoun that has a different translation depending on the, on the well, on the, on the context, okay? So this transformer was just uh, uh, proposed very recently in June. Uh, uh, so now uh, a very nice uh, line of research. I don't know if it's for projects or what. Uh, I don't know if it, be, it would be too big, but to apply it to any other things that are not transla only translation, no? Okay. So for example, we are trying it now with chatbots, but I mean, you can try it for speech recognition, you can try it for whatever, no? Okay, it's like the same idea what was done by sequence to sequence can be done for the transformer and it should work better. Okay, uh, just like a summary, um, recurrent neural networks are used to, to model sequences. Better than recurrent neural networks are the, the attention mechanisms or complementary to the recurrent neural networks. We have the attention mechanisms that are uh, used to enhance uh, modeling long sequences, okay? And the versatility of these models allows them to apply them uh, to a wide range of applications, no? So we have um, different implementations for, for the encoder-decoder. We have these LSTMs, we have convolutional neural networks for images, but at the end is the same architecture. We have different attention-based mechanisms, soft versus hard, global versus local, intra, in, self intra attention versus external um, 
but uh, the idea is that we have all these areas, text, speech, image, all converging to a, to a single paradigm and it's just this deep learning that is making them con converging. Uh, because I mean, okay, we have seen that the architecture that was initially proposed by machine translation is applied to text, speech and image, but it's not uh, the other way round happens. So, uh, uh, for example, in machine translation, we are using ideas from images. We have in, image, in machine translation, we have used, for example, convolutional neural networks mm, to train car uh, to use characters in s instead of, of words. No, so I mean, all the all the applications are contaminating each other in the good way. Um, and for example, uh, one approach that now has is, 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 inve is being investigated as well is to put everything in the same box and try to 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 learn a zero shot artificial intelligence, not zero shot application. For example, if I have data for recognizing Spanish and I have English Spanish translation and I have images that go from uh, image captioning in Chinese, whatever, I can, I can train a system in Spanish Chinese without having data from Spanish Chinese directly, but the other types of data can complement this, um, uh, this data that, that, that I don't have, no, and, and do. This has been done, for example, for multilingual translation, where you don't have data for a particular pair of languages, but you have data for complementary. So let's say you have English, Spanish, you have French, uh, Spanish, you can um, trans translate from French to English without having this, this parallel data, okay? Because you put everything as source, target, and you can have this. And from this, there are these approaches, one model to learn them all that it's practically the transformer with some I implementations where you have uh, you are learning different tasks in the same model okay and well so that's all for the the attention models we have a lot of research going on this so so if you are interested just ask you know who, who, who to ask Xavi, Noe, me and all the professors Anyway. So uh, a good book. There is no book for that. No, I guess <laughs> because in the deep learning book uh, there is very little from attention. But I mean, I I would refer you to to papers. I mean, uh, yeah. There is a tutorial as well. In uh, the, the one that I based this slide on, I, it's on the on the first page. This tutorial is the one that has the most recent, and the lecture notes from this tutorial is the one that has the most recent approaches, I, I would say. Graham, you, you, Graham Newitz lecture, you can go there and The video is more updated than the lecture notes he mentioned it, but but the thing is is that okay for the basis you can take a look at what Noe is saying, but for the advanced things you have to look into papers because I mean it's every day they, they are appearing, which is what I would recommend, no? So, so to have a look at the basics in, in that in that things of Noe, but then read papers. If you are interested in one uh, type of application, or you just tell me and I can. More questions? Okay, so I think that you have the project session now, no?